In this video, we look at how you use the basic machine code operations listed when machine code instructions are expressed in mnemonic form assembly language using both immediate and direct dressing. Assembly language took each of the binary numbers for instructions and allowed them to be written as groups of letters known as mnemonics. The instructions, as well as the addresses in memory where data was being stored, also had to be referred to as numbers. Remember, an instruction is made up of an opcode and an operand. When using assembly languages, each opcode can be replaced by a mnemonic, and each operand can be replaced by a decimal or hexadecimal number. In the exam, you need to be familiar with basic machine code operations. You also need to be able to use the machine code operations shown here when they're expressed in their mnemonic or shorthand letter form. The assembly language mnemonic form used in AQA exam papers is based off the ARM assembly language used by Raspberry Pi and is shown here. There are many free simulators on the web that allow you to practice assembly code. Peter Hickson has developed a very simplified ARM-like RISC simulator that implements only the instructions AQA use in the exams. It is freely available at the following web address. It provides a great way of practicing, writing and executing simple assembly language programs. So let's just break this simulator down a bit so you understand what the main components do. In RAM, we have 200 memory locations and they're numbered 0 to 199. The processor contains the following components. We have an arithmetic logic unit. We have a program counter. We have a current instruction register. We have a memory address register. We have a memory buffer register. The simulated computer cannot tell whether memory locations contain instructions or data. Most modern computers can segment memory, but there must be a way for the output from one program to become the instructions for another. The assembler allows you to create and use labels in your program. A label is placed in the code by writing an identifier followed by a colon. To refer to a label, the identifier of the label is placed after the branching instruction. The left hand box is where you write the assembly language program. Once you've written it, you then press the assemble button at the bottom. If you have any errors in your program, you will see a warning message in the box below and the line will be highlighted in red. Once the program has been compiled by the assembler, you can press either the run or step button to progress through the program. You may need to watch the simulation a few times to get a good feel for what's going on. When the program is running, you can also speed up, slow down or stop the simulation. An explanation of what is happening at each stage of the simulation is also provided at the bottom. A couple of things to notice. Each instruction has been loaded into memory location in RAM, as you'd expect. Each instruction needs to be fetched from memory and then decoded in the CPU before it can be executed. As each new fetch cycle begins, the program counter is incremented by one to ensure it holds the address of the next instruction to be executed. So here are the assembly language mnemonics for data transfer, arithmetic, branching and comparison instructions that you'll be expected to be familiar with in the exam. And here are the ones for logical operations. You're going to be given this as a supplementary sheet in the exam, so you don't actually have to remember the exact syntax of all of these off the top of your head. OK, so let's start by breaking down what this simple assembly language program does. The first line, move R3, comma, hash 20. The opcode for this line is move, which performs a copy. 
we copy the value specified by the operand 20 into register R3. The opcode for this line is sub, which performs a subtraction. We subtract the value specified by the operand 5 from the value held in register R3, 20, and store the result 15 in R3. The opcode for this line is str, which stores the contents of the register in memory. So we copy the contents of register R3, 15, into the memory location specified by the operand, 050. The final command halt stops the execution of the program. So this assembly program has performed the simple calculation 20 minus 5 equals 15 and stored the result back in memory. Let's try one more slightly complex example. So again, the first line, the opcode for this is CMP, which performs a comparison. We compare the value stored in register R1, which is zero, with the value specified by the operand, one zero. The opcode for the second line is BNE, which means branch if the previous comparison was not equal. We consider the results of the previous comparison. As they're not equal, because naught does not equal 10, we branch to the label, so to the else section. The opcode for the third line is MOV, which performs a copy. So if we'd not branched always in the previous line, we would execute this line of assembly, which would copy the value specified by the operand 9 into register R2. The opcode for this line is B, which means branch always. So if this line is ever hit, the program will automatically branch to the label end if. The opcode for this line is add, which performs addition. We add the value specified in operand 1 to the value held in R1, which is 0, and store the result 1 in register 1, R1. And the final line is the halt, which stops the execution of the program. So this is effectively the assembly language version of the following high level language if else statement. If y equals 10, then x equals 10. Otherwise, y equals y plus 1. End if. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. What are the basic machine code operations? And how are these expressed in the exam using mnemonics?